Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the My Gardener channel. I'm going to be doing a video today on something that I've not done in a very long time, so hopefully you all can sense my excitement. I just, uh, I really wanted to clarify uh, a few things on my beliefs on pH and uh, kind of along those lines, what is my pH right now at this current moment? And uh, just to, I guess, shed some light on, on some, some questions that keep coming up about pH. Now, I do get asked all the time, uh, Luke, what is your preferred pH and why? Well, my preferred pH is slightly acidic and slightly acidic can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. My definition of slightly acidic is around 5.5 to 6.5. That's my, my, that's my idea of slightly acidic. Now, my preferred acidity is right around 6.0 to 6.5. Not so acidic that uh, it's, it's harmful to other plants, but just acidic enough that uh, it can be hospitable to most plants. In all of our growing guides, you typically hear me talk about the ideal pH of plants. And uh, that causes a lot of concern for other people because they say, well, if I'm growing a plant that likes alkaline soil next to a plant that likes acidic soil, how do they coexist? Are they going to be hurting? And the answer is slightly, slightly. Your plants adapt very well. And the more often you grow them and save the seeds from them, which we show you how to do because we think it's important, that's why we show it, is because the plants will begin to adapt to your soil conditions. And assuming you do the same thing year after year, your soil is going to have pretty much the same pH with minor, minor fluctuations. Depending on obviously uh, rain, rain has a, has a very strong impact on uh, soil acidity. Your a native soil, also has a big impact on soil acidity. But if you do the same thing, same soil regimen, for instance, us, is we apply one pound of trifecta to every 10 square feet of beds. Uh, that's basically what we do in terms of uh, fertilizing, and then we add compost. And so we do that every single spring, every single time, and we never miss it. And so our pH has always remained the same after applying. Now I don't go back and check mid season and say, oh man, I gotta reapply some sulfur. Oh man, my, my acidity is too low. I gotta reapply some lime. I just don't. And I've never had bad results. Have I, have I ever had bad results? Okay, I don't think so. I'm, I can't remember if I've ever had bad results. Um, no, uh, <laughs> I've always had a really great garden. I've always been very pleased with it. And other years are obviously better than others, but not because of the pH, folks, not because of the pH. Um, what pH does is it helps the plant uptake nutrients. So a pH does play a very pivotal role in the plants uptaking the amount of nutrients that they need. And obviously if the pH is too low or too high, it's going to affect nutrient uptake. But for the most part, if it's in a window of, you know, one to even two points um, in, on the pH scale, you're going to be fine, I promise, you're going to be fine. That's where you start getting in those very tiny nitpicks to where a more advanced gardener like myself might look into it, but I'm an advanced gardener that doesn't look into it because it's a lot of extra work for not a lot of output, and that's just being honest. If you were someone that was looking at it from like, a, from like an agricultural extension or a university that's looking into researching it, that probably would matter quite a bit to you. But for me, output is output, and the extra money and time it's going to take to fix it and keep it uh, you know, the same across uh, any day of the year, it's not worth it. So when I first applied trifecta and compost, compost is a very good pH buffer and trifecta is slightly acidic to get me right at that kind of 6.0 to 6.5 acidity mark. And I typically always have right around there, but I never actually take the time to measure it um, and, uh, and I just kind of am interested to see what it is. So uh, the pH is being read and just as expected, the pH is so it starts at 8.1 and drops down to 7.0. 7.8, 7.0. Let it calibrate here. And okay, it's calibrated and the results are focus. The results are 7.0. 
So just as I suspected, the, the compost has acted as a pH buffer like it always does. And your soil will return if you use primarily compost, this soil being about 90% compost, is going to be a, a very strong pH buffer that almost you, you would be fighting this for, your, for the rest of your life to remain at, uh, at that 6.5 level, uh, or even six for that matter. Um, so again, it, it moves back up to seven because compost is pretty much pH neutral and you're going to, uh, you're going to find that's the case in most cases. And so that's not a surprise to me, but it's also not a surprise that, uh, you know, my plants typically start off really well. And as the season progresses, it kind of happens naturally because you have a case in which your cool other crops being stuff that really likes alkaline soil typically does better when it's cooler. And I guess maybe that's just nature's way of saying, Luke, you've done well, <laughs> or maybe it's just happenstance. I don't, I have no clue. But during the growing season, when the soil's more acidic, I'm growing things that like more acidic soil, like tomatoes and peppers and other things like that. But plants like arugula like slightly alkaline soil and pH of seven is neutral. So it's almost alkaline. And, uh, and you can see that depending on which way you move it, it may or may not be slightly alkaline. So that's like 7.5 in certain areas, but then it calibrates down to seven. So between seven and 7.5, that even went up to 7.4. So, um, so you have a case in which it might be slightly alkaline here. And that's just because the native soil is clay and clay is, is very alkaline as well. So um, between seven and 7.4 is where, where we're at right now. And I think that's fine because plants like our like our uh, cool weather crops, like our arugula here, they do great. So in short, am I complaining about my soil? No. Am I happy with it? Absolutely. It grows plants very well. My plants produce extremely well. And I guess as we also found out, it probably works with the seasons very well because during this season, I'm not growing tomatoes and I'm not growing uh, potatoes and things that like very acidic soil. Now, would I have a hard time growing blueberries? Absolutely. And that would be a case in which I might apply some more effort to change the, the uh, I guess the pH qualities of the soil to, uh, to be a little more ideal for growing blueberries. But since I'm not, I'm not worried because during this time, the only thing I'm really growing is my cold weather greens and they're producing just fine and they taste just fine. So anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, keep growing bigger going home. See ya.